Hey guys, welcome. Uh, this is a scene on my Colorado Joint Line layout. Uh, it's actually in the town of Larkspur. It looks pretty good. But uh, one of the things it needs, actually it needs lots of things. It needs buildings, needs vehicles, needs some other things. But one of the things it certainly needs is some signs. And I'm going to show you a technique that I use to go ahead and take some commercially available signs and make them look a little bit better. There's lots of commercially available ones out there, and they look pretty good, but there's a couple simple techniques you can use to go ahead and make them look even a little bit better. And so we're going to do that today. So with that, let's go ahead and head over to the workbench, and I'll show you what I do. Okay, so here's the signs I'm going to use in this technique. Uh, these are the ones that I use on my Colorado joint line layout. Uh, they're made by Titchy Train Group, uh, and they're pretty good. They're molded in color, but uh, I think they can be improved some, and that's what uh, I'm going to show you in this technique today. Now, one of the things with uh, these packages, uh, and even a lot of the other packages, manufacturers, uh, especially with the caution signs, you end up with some signs that you don't need. Uh, like, I really don't need a cow crossing, and I don't need a tractor crossing on my layout, but I can go ahead and use those, and I will uh, show you that today on how I can incorporate those signs uh, into my layout. So to get started, the first thing, I'll just have to uh, cut the signs free from the sprues, and then we'll get started. Now when you're cutting these, you want to cut the post longer than necessary. That way you'll have a little bit of extra to push down into the scenery and still have your sign tall enough. And your signs uh, should actually be fairly tall. Uh, they should be to the bottom of the sign uh, part, or the bottom, in this case, bottom of that stop sign, should be at least 5 feet to 8 feet off the uh, ground. Now you will want to go ahead and trim uh, any of the post or whatever that's sticking up above the sign to make sure it's flush at the top. Okay, so on to the technique. Uh, what we're going to do is actually paint these such that the backs of the signs of the poles uh, look better. And so what you want to do is use some uh, masking tape or striping tape and put your sign on there face down, but put it so that the bottom of the sign is perfectly flush with that tape. You don't want extending down below the bottom of the sign. You want it perfectly flush. And I usually do this to uh, about six signs at a time kind of thing. You can attach multiple signs uh, to a single piece of tape. Uh, just space them out a little bit and make sure they're all nice and flush and then use a second piece of tape to come back and cover the tops of the signs. And you can see here the uh, top of my cow crossing sign uh, still needed another piece of tape to uh, make sure you cover it, uh, or it was covered completely. And with this, you don't want to cover the backs at all yet. Uh, we're just covering the front of the signs. So now what you want to do is spray the back of the signs a uh, silver color. On these signs, the actual color I'm using is called aluminum plate, but I've also used stainless steel or some other silver colors, and they all look about the same once they're on the signs. So once they're painted, the uh, backs of the signs will look like this. So now what you're going to want to do is go ahead and use your uh, masking tape or striping tape again and cover the back of the sign that we just painted, but don't cover the pole, including the pole that's attached to the back of the sign. And so you go ahead and apply this uh, vertically in parallel to the pole and just cover the back of the sign carefully and make sure that it is uh, nice and flush up against the edge of the pole that's attached to the back of the sign, but not rolling up or covering a portion of the back of the pole. So all your signs will end up looking kind of like this. And then you have to carefully peel them off of... Uh, your mat or table or whatever you've been uh, having them sit on while you're uh, putting that tape down. And uh, the signs are kind of fragile, so you have to be a little bit careful doing this. But uh, once you get it free, then go ahead and roll over the top of the tape, top and bottom of the tape, so that it seals the top edge of the sign and the bottom edge of the sign so none of the paint uh, leaks onto that uh, silver that you just painted. And so once you're finished doing that, it'll look something like this. And now they're ready to be taken over and have the poles painted. And I use a spray paint uh, to paint mine sort of a, a medium dark green. And here they are after the poles have been painted. 
Okay, and so now the uh, actually the hardest part of this whole technique is getting all the tape back off the sign. And what I do in order to do this is actually rip each sign into its own little um, piece and then carefully peel back the tape starting in uh, the opposite order that I put them on. And you just carefully peel it around. As I mentioned earlier, the signs are kind of fragile, so you can't just uh, rip the tape to pull it off. You actually have to sort of peel it back off uh, so you don't damage the sign. So once all the tape's off, your signs will look like this. And I think they already look really good, but there's still one last thing we can do to them to make them look a little bit better. If you go up and look at most signs, the bottom uh, foot or two of the sign, or the pole, is actually uh, kind of rusty and dirty. And so I simulate that on these by uh, sort of wet brushing, dry brushing on some burnt umber. Now this is a um, by Woodland Scenics and it's actually more of a stain than a paint. So it doesn't go on very thick. It actually goes on sort of translucent. And so with that I can brush it on. It's not exactly dry brushing because the, the brush is a little more wet than it would be with a dry brushing technique. But I'm putting it on fairly thin and because it's not really a, a thick paint, it's a, a bit of a thin stain anyway, it just sort of stains the bottom of the pole and does not look like it's painted on. It looks like there's just sort of something on top of the uh, green pole that's already there. And that's the effect I was trying to get. Yeah. And so here you can see what that looks like with the bottom couple feet sort of stained uh, with a little bit of brown on them. And here's a close-up showing the bottom half of the, the pole that's been uh, stained or painted and the top half that's just the green. And that is it for this technique. Uh, like I said, it's very simple, very easy, really quick. Uh, you just need some tape and some spray paint. And then if you want to uh, paint the pole, the bottom part a little bit brown, uh, it's really quick. It adds a lot to the signs and improves their overall look quite a bit. And to mount them on the layout, I use just a, a clear tacky glue. Uh, depending on where it's being mounted in, I'll use a, uh, a little pin or hard metal object kind of thing to make a little bit of a hole uh, for them first and then insert them into the hole and they look really good. Now what did I end up doing with that uh, cow crossing and tractor crossing sign that I don't really need a cow crossing or tractor crossing sign? Well on your layout you should have about half of the signs on your layout facing away from you you're just looking at the backs of them and because of that there's always going to be some of them that are going to be either up against the backdrop or a building or position and such that you're never going to be able to see the front of the sign and so that's exactly what I do with those oddball signs uh, like the tractor crossing or cow crossing or a speed limit sign that has a speed limit on it that I don't need uh, you can use those for some of the signs that are facing opposite the viewer and they give that great effect of being on the layout and being detailed and you've got a nice sign there, but you're not wasting a good sign that you could actually use the front of it. So with that, I hope you try this technique out. I hope you like it. I hope you find it easy. And as always, keep running your trains, keep enjoying them, and we'll catch you at the next update.